What is darkness in the Platonic tradition? We begin from the light. And the traditional image for light is that of the sun that emanates, generates a ray of light out of itself, transports itself into a ray. This ray is an intellective act through which things, which is to say determined beings, finite beings, are created, shaped. What about the dark? There is no dark, we are told, in itself. Therefore, somehow, the dark is produced with the intellective act. The intellective act carries with it somehow a shadow. The determination of the light has a context from the vantage point of the determination, that context is dark. To better understand this simile, we can recall the story of the Garden of Eden. The Garden is a place of all good things, and all good things are creations of the light. If the garden is a place for all good things, from the standpoint of those who abide within the garden, everything that is outside of the garden is, at the very least, ambiguous. Indeed, it stands in the dark. Adam and Eve themselves, Adam, as the unity of the two, does not know what is outside. If we think of the garden as a place of light, outside of the garden it must be dark. And yet somehow darkness enters into the garden. Somehow it speaks, if only as an echo, a distorted echo, of a voice that cannot be deciphered, understood, or even heard directly, most notably by Eve. She does not hear that voice, the voice speaking outside of the garden, but she hears a distorted echo of that voice, which is the one that we traditionally attribute to the snake. She does not see the snake. She hears the reptilian voice. Somehow there is darkness in the light. Darkness in the light somehow reflects the darkness outside of the garden. What is the darkness outside of the garden? It is the source of the garden. Indeed, it can be nothing other than the mind of God, which is unfathomable for Adam and Eve. For them to leap, to reach out, to the mind of God is for them to fail. What Eve can grasp is merely the distorted echo of the voice of God. There is another way for Adam to hear God. It will be through laws. It will be through the art of naming, uh, not by direct leaping.
the dog. Where does it come from? So the story tells us that there are two aspects to the dark. On the one hand, the dark is the dark mystery of the divine mind, of the divine being itself. On the other hand, darkness is the context of determination. Every time we are determined, every time we identify ourselves with a determination, a finite being, our context must be uncertain, must be ignored, not understood, must be threatening, dangerous, a menace, filled with at least potential evils, and of course temptations. But as we transcend our determination, as we open up to that which determines us, namely the ray of light, which traditionally is also referred to as logos, the intellective act which speaks, we are then no longer determined in a context that we fear. Instead, our context, our true context, emerges as a darkness that we desire. In our confusion, we usually fear what we desire and desire what we fear. Our desire is then not pure. It is mixed with compulsion, with ignorance. But if our desire is candid, as we open up to that which determines us, not in the spirit of suspicion and fear, but in the spirit of trust, then darkness is no longer threatening. It is a, a place of discovery. It is a cradle of salvation. So, where does darkness come from? Where does the dark come from? The dark is a nothing, a nothingness, a nihil in Latin. There is a doctrine in medieval Christianity, the doctrine of creation from nothing, creatio ex nihilo. That doctrine is telling us that everything is created directly from God. God does not use something outside of God to create determinations of being. The nothing that we come out of is not something aside from God. It is, in fact, in the expression creatio ex nihilo, God himself. It is divine being, eternal being. Creatio ex nihilo is to say that creation is from God himself and from nothing other than God. The darkness that we find ourselves in as determined beings is none other than a distorted echo 
of eternal being. As long as we remain determined, we take our bearings from that distorted echo. But as we open up to the act that determines us, the darkness that once was a threat is now our salvation. Yeah.